This video is brought to you by the official Flashy Instagram. Follow Flashy Magazine for all things music, pop culture, and fashion. It's no secret that the music industry is a fishy business. Record labels are constantly trying to capitalize on the dreams of young and emerging talent. They promise they'll help make you the next big star and give you a record contract that looks great from a glance, but of course is something you can't understand. And because you're so young, you probably don't have the lawyers or resources to read such a technical contract. So you end up signing your rights and voice away without even knowing it. And with how these record labels are set up to be monopolies of money and power, it's practically impossible to go up against them. It's unfortunate because time and time again, we're seeing these artists being held back from the amazing careers they could have had if the record label wasn't so greedy or controlling. There's no person who I feel has had their career ripped away more than pop artist Sky Ferreira. In an alternate universe, everyone knows exactly who she is, and pop fans would rank her amongst artists like Billie Eilish, Lord, and Charlie XCX. But in this world, she's never got the chance to experience mainstream success. In this video, I thought we could take a look at Sky Ferreira's career and understand how her record label robbed her of the amazing career she was supposed to have. Let's get into it. Sky was born on July 8, 1992 in Venice, California. She was raised by her grandmother, who was employed as a personal hairstylist for Michael Jackson. Because of this, Sky spent a lot of time with the Jackson family, and at the age of seven, after Michael caught her singing, he convinced her grandmother to let her join a gospel choir. As a teen, Sky didn't really like the click aspect of school and was relentlessly bullied. She decided to start posting self-written songs to her MySpace account and caught the attention of pop producers Bloodshy and Avant, who offered her a record deal with Parlophone Records. Sky accepted and started off her career releasing electro pop songs that were reminiscent of the 2010 trend. It was clear that in the times of Katy Perry and Lady Gaga, that Parlophone Records was trying to craft Sky to be the next it girl that would take over radio stations. They set her up with some of the best pop producers in the game, from Greg Kirsten to Rob Fasari to Ryan Tedder. Even though she didn't really enjoy the song she was creating, her record label promised her creative freedom later down the line. Sky ended up releasing three singles that were supposed to come off her debut album. However, after they failed to make a commercial impact, Parlophone Records shelved her. They kept throwing updates for her debut album, but never stuck to an official date of release. She said in interviews that she turned in a total of 68 songs, and her debut album just continued to be pushed more and more back. They did did release an EP though titled As If, which received absolutely no promotion or major label push. After the EP failed to make any commercial impact yet again, Sky decided to take more creative control of her records. She began to work with Vampire Weekend's Ariel and Blood Orange's Devontae Hines. On April of 2013, she dropped the synth pop inspired song titled Everything Is Embarrassing. The song became an internet frenzy on the indie side and on honestly reminded me a lot of what these producers did with Carly Rae Jepsen's 2015 record, Emotion. Sky subsequently released a new EP titled Ghosts that incorporated a wider variety of genres, from synth pop to pop rock. After the success of the EP, the record label didn't really know what to do with Sky. They'd just been sold to Warner Records, and the date of her album was becoming more and more unclear. The record label eventually said that she could finish her album on her own, but that she would have to fund it herself. Sky capitalized on her growing modeling career, working and using that money to buy studio time and equipment. Things would take a dark turn when Sky was arrested with her boyfriend for possession of ecstasy and resisting arrest. Despite only being in possession of one drug, the media attempted to paint her as this drug-obsessed wannabe. She was looking more like a socialite, cause she would hang out with all these A-list celebs that would know how good of an actual artist she was, but the public had no idea. After multiple delays, Sky's debut album was officially released on October 29th, 2013. The album is a beautiful mix between synth pop, grunge, and rock. 
It's, in my opinion, a pop masterpiece and was so advanced for its time. I'd personally rank it amongst my favorite albums like Melodrama and Emotion. Commercially, the album peaked at number 45 on the Billboard Hot 100, despite getting absolutely no promotion or push from her record label. The album was praised critically by a majority of publications, even landing at number 43 on Pitchfork's best album of the 2010s. Sky had built up enough underground hype that she was able to tour with Miley Cyrus on the Bangers tour, but eventually had to leave due to a leg injury. After the acclaim for her first album, you'd think that Sky would try to capitalize on it with her second record. In 2015, she announced that her second album would be titled Masochism, but year after year, she's continually pushed the record back with false promises. In a 2019 Pitchfork interview, she alluded to the fact that part of the reason her record was taking so long is because her record label was prohibiting her from releasing music. She also said that she's a perfectionist and wants the record to be good. While Sky hasn't released a second album, she's kept herself busy with acting jobs and released one song titled Downhill Lullaby, which was praised by critics. Her whole career has just been a really tumultuous ride, and I think if her record label would have treated her ideas with more respect, she would have had a commercially successful album by now. When Lana Del Rey came onto the scene and introduced the genre of alternative pop, there was a flood of artists that came out, and Sky was one of the most interesting. She was literally in between the worlds of major pop stars like Lady Gaga and alternative pop stars like Lord, but her record label just could not see that shift happening. And look, I'm not gonna lie to you and say that once she drops her second album, she'll take over the world. Because at this point, it's a running joke that she's been named the next big artist by every major publication, including this one. But Sky, at the end of the day, is a good artist. And I hope that in the future, she will be able to get the recognition and success she so rightfully deserves. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, then make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. If you would like to support the channel in any way, then consider becoming a patron. For monthly contribution, you support the channel and get some cool perks, like watching videos early or voting on video topics. In fact, right now I'm taking suggestions on what video topics I should do for this month, so make sure to check out the link in my description. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it every time you guys tune in each week. It really means the world. And I apologize for not posting consistent as of late. I've had finals from schools, but that's all over now. So get ready for more consistent flashy. That's all I got for now. Thank you guys again for watching. I love you all. And I will catch you with the next video real soon.